And the final thing, most important thing, is set performance criteria and commit to them. Performance criteria for both of our decisions. The what's the minimum we'll accept to take this from prototype to production. This might be an important decision if that's a lot of engineering effort. And then what is the minimum performance that I require to release it in full on all my users or customers. And you need to decide these up front. Why do we decide up front? Because we are human. And as humans, we fall in love with the things we build. As we pour our hearts into it and we put effort in, even if what we have made is a pile of poisonous rubbish, we look at it and we say, oh, but the performance is not so bad. And that's how awful things get released. And so while we are still sober, before we have fallen in love with anything, we take a good, cold, hard look and we ask, okay, what is the minimum I accept? And then we commit to crushing this thing if it doesn't make that minimum. Because we have just answered before we've poured all our love and energy into it, like seriously, if it's less than this point, it just really shouldn't exist. It would be a bad idea to let it out there. And that's how we protect ourselves from bargaining ourselves into bad situations. Now, this is not an aspirational metric. You can have that as well. That's a guiding star thing, and that can move around all you like uh, as you need to change it to motivate your team. But what you test against later has to be preset at this stage, and it has to be a minimum that you're going to accept. This is, as economists like to say, incentive compatible. If you use the guiding star here, then you'll test against it. And if you end up performing above that, well, you would have performed above the minimum. So same thing. But maybe you end up getting a performance that lands somewhere between your minimum and your guiding star. And the conditions of testing say, well, under that, you have to kill the system, so you miss out on a system that actually would have been viable for life. So I hope you realize why I have to laugh to myself a little bit when people ask me, hey, Cassie, is machine learning like better than human? Well, it depends on you, the decision maker, because tautologies are tautological. If you said that the thing must be better than human, and you tested it correctly, and it now exists, it is better than human. But maybe that wasn't the performance you required, because you could have made a profit on it being at scale, but you know, a little worse than human. That's maybe still fine and profitable. And maybe you set your performance requirements at below human performance, and like, that's okay. Maybe it's below human performance. It depends on you. If you need it to be that good, then don't release anything that isn't. That's all there is to it. So key message here, the proof of the pudding for machine learning is always in the eating. And you have to figure out how you do the proving up front in this step. Decide on how you're going to measure success and set that cold, hard minimum early so you don't bargain yourself into releasing rubbish.